This example is going to show how we can draw a chart with the user activity and then click through to show another graph. It uses WPF, which is uh, for next generation graphics, and through a, a web browser. The example that we're going to see uses the AM charts component. And if we look at our, our basic XAML, and what we'll do is we'll, we'll just run the the program first to give you some idea of what the output is going to look like and then we'll go through each of the elements of it and then how we can generate the events in C Sharp and then handle them. Okay, so it runs as an XBAP through a web browser and this will run in the sandbox of the machine. Just takes a little minute to start up. So we can see here we can click on uh, various machines and we can see activity if we just zoom in here. Mm -hmm. So here we have a chart which has users and we have time and then we can click on any of the users and then see activity. Again we can click through and it leads to another graph. Okay, so our, our main task is to draw these, these bars, get the balloon to show, and then to be able to create an event for us to be able to click through onto a graph. So our basic example looks, looks like this. Our chart name, and then we add a chart. So the chart sets up the, the base for all our data to go on it. Then there is a balloon setup, which is our mouse over text, and then we have our axis, and finally we have a graph. So we can give the graph any color that we want, and we can make it op opaque. And in this case, we'll just set up a certain color. So this will give us a, a shade shading effect and we can change the opacity if we want and we also have a, a, a timeline set up so that we have some some animation on on the graphs and if we just try and find their animation here be part of our storyboard Here we go. So our animation effects that we can have. So we'll go for elastic there, mm -hmm. and we can have a start animation time for our storyboard. So the actual code behind this is a little like this. So whenever the page is loaded, then it, it obviously calls some sort of initialization event, and what we've done is we've called it my chart. And then I've created a list called user activity. And so the list is fairly simple in this case. It will basically have a, a username and then a start and an, and an end point. So if we have a look at the static data structure that we've set up, we'll see what the list looks like. So we have user activity here, which is a new list. And that's based on this user class. We'll just call it user start and end and then that's basically just filled up with some user activity just try and find the method that actually fills that so here we are and this fills up the list with a, a user a, a random start time and then some increment to give us our end time. So we can see in our list we only have three main elements, the user, start and end, and that's added to the list. We will then associate that list 
with our graph chart. So if we go back to this, we'll see here, this is us setting up the x-axis. We're actually moving the, the actual graph to make it vertical, so our x-axis actually goes on to the y-axis. And we should be able to see here, so the orientation for our graph is, is vertical. If it was horizontal, then we'd actually see the users along the bottom, but what we want is to see the users along the side. So we'll make that vertical. And so this is us defining that the, in the list column user, that will be used as the, as the, the basic axis uh, for it. And then after that, we can then go through our list and we add a column data point and for each column data point we identify the series identity that comes from our, our user ID and then we can then take from the list the start and the end time we associate a, a mouse button so in this case whenever the user uh, clicks the button and the mouse comes up the mouse button comes up then it will call up our mouse event up and for this we can actually just redraw the graph change the the level of the data so that we see new things so this is basically the event that is that is called uh, to be able to refresh the, the the chart and then we can then add that onto the actual chart so what we've done is we've set up a chart column chart graph here called my plot what we could do is we could set up another chart if we wanted called plot 2 and this time we'll make it red and dark red if we wanted to put two charts on a on a on a two column graphs on a single chart and then what we could do is we could just uh, possibly add the same data onto it, onto my plot 2 and then maybe move this on by, by 10. So we should see two graphs, one is moved on by, by 10 and we can have the same mouse event and this will add our chart. We don't need to uh, get rid of the elements of the chart because we initialize it each time that it's actually called up Okay, so we'll try and build that. And hopefully we should see two charts now on our on our graph. Okay, so we just run that now. And the great thing with XAML is that uh, we can display this as a chart with inside a frame on a page or we can show it on its same own page. So on this main page here we've actually displayed it with inside a frame just takes a little minute to start up here we go okay so we can see this is the new chart that we've added and then this was the other one and we've uh, moved this chart on slightly from the other one so we can actually go to this chart here and actually see our activity. And we see uh, an example here. Okay, so this shows an example of using the column graph with inside SAML. You can see uh, it is uh, an excellent method of producing graphics through a web browser.